tonight's talk uh, centers around, well, we call, we call, we're calling it Dear Barry. And uh, who remembers uh, Barry Shapiro? I'm, I think a few people uh, uh, in the crowd here. <laughs> and uh, Barry Shapiro, of course, from 1958 to, was it 2002? 2001. 2001, uh, did the uh, Texas A&M University NMR newsletter. And I dare say right through, gee, easily early, early to mid-'80s, they used this 30-bit operating yeah. system monstrosity. <laughs> but anyways, very happy to have uh, Dave Rice from uh, UC Merced, uh, co-presenter, uh, Clemens Anklin from uh, Brooker, and uh, veterans of the industry. Uh, I promised I would not use the term old-timers, so I will not use the term old-timers. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, let, 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 me, let me turn it over to these two young men. Thank Dave, you. I'll uh, hand the mic over to you. Okay, with that introduction, there's not much more for me to say myself, except that after I learned about uh, Clemens, what Clemens had done, you know, I then, and, and we thought of having this talk, that um, I, uh, I went back and began to, to look through them, and one at a time, and trying to find the ones that I was looking, you know, that were meaningful to me. And then I discovered that on the ISMAR webpage, there is a database, Excel file, with good searching. And we put it on this computer if people are interested later. But anyway, I'm going to give the mic to Clemens. I got that. And you got I'm, it? Okay. And I'm get, all And why don't you get started? Up. Okay, why don't Thank you get you started? Thank you very much, Dave. Okay. Um, it's a great pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation to present here. Yeah. Uh, I think this is something which should not be forgotten and kind of vanished somewhere. And that's why I engaged into this project. So we're talking about Dear Barry or, Barry Sh or Dear Professor Shapiro, as it was also known. Uh, the NMR newsletters from 1958 to 2001, every month. So the, the history, the story of NMR in 516 volumes. Uh, for the few who don't know me, I'm Clement Anklin. I'm a broker. I'm the head of the Applications Laboratory. I'm active on Twitter. You've probably seen that. Uh, so what I would like to do now is to go through a little bit of the history of the project more than the history of the, of the NMR newsletters. So how did it all start? In August of 2020, there was a tweet from Frances Zeparovic. She's in Australia right now. She's, she's an NMR person. And she said, the... NMR newsletter was edited by Bernard Shapiro until about 2001. Are articles still able to be accessed? And we realized they're not. Because this, the, the NMR newsletter was not a journal. This was personal communication. So they were not filed in libraries. They sat on personal bookshelves. And as people moved, retired, whatever, a lot of that got lost and tossed out. So I responded to Francis and said, I have a few. Actually, I have a collection of 303 of the 516. <laughs> I was, <laughs> um, okay, what was there or not there is a history of uh, how, how well people archive things or don't. So anyway, <laughs> so... I responded, I have an almost complete collection, and then uh, the um, Magnetic Resonance News, or NMR, at NMR 900, our colleague in Ottawa, responded, it, wouldn't it be a good idea if it was digitized? And at the point I said I would volunteer my collection if I find a warm body to do the scanning. Guess what, that warm body was not found, so who's the warm body? <laughs> standing right here so I started scanning and so how did it come together 
Uh, Brooker, we had the no I called it almost complete. There were actually, um, it was really, I only had three missing issues between 88 and 2001. And funny enough, I moved to Bellarica in 88, so I guess I archived well. <laughs> so then there is, uh, in our collection, there was a gap uh, between 84 and 88. From 84 back to, to 68, we had quite a bit. And that was done by uh, some of you in the remember names like Chris Hanser. <laughs> so uh, they did that. So <coughs> since we were still in partial lockdown, what else are you going to do? You're going to take these issues, take out the staples, put it on your scanner, scan it through. So that's what I started doing. And actually, the older ones were easy. Because the older ones were just letter. And I think they were mimeographed or something like that. Nobody remembers what that was. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they scanned really easier. So I put them on the scanner, press, scan, and I had a file fairly easily. Then later on, ads became, uh, started appearing in the time of newsletter, or in the NMR newsletter, let's call it like that. I'll get into the details in a, mo in a minute. And some of the companies, I mean, it's a miracle that they didn't send their ads on, uh, on like particle board or <laughs> something harder than that. But some of the intermediate, and I brought some example here. I mean, talk about cardboard ads. And I can tell you one thing on a multi-page scanner, they just jam. It's hopeless. Or some put eight-page booklets in there. And uh, I didn't bring it here, but I actually did send it to Frank Delaglio. There is a picture of Frank in the pages, which is <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> so it took, it took time. I had to take these out, scan the rest, scan those individually, put it back in. So on average, scan time was between 1 and 10 minutes. Then just as everything, you scan it, you want to make it nice. So you spend another 2 to 5 minutes optical character recognition, sort it out, straighten it, do everything nice. And then, you know, you start reading that stuff. <laughs> Let's not talk about that part of the thing. That was by far the majority of time spent was just, oh, look, there is this, pay there's this letter and that letter. And I just kept reading. It's beautiful. <laughs> so anyway, so... About a year ago, that was the state. The blue ones uh, were pretty much out of our collection. I had them all done. There were 213 missing. So I made a call to the community on MREL, on the drawer list, on Twitter, on all the social media I had available. And the community delivered. It was really amazing. So I received issues from Brian Sykes. He had a collection. And so he said, I have a lot of them. And I said, OK, I can scan them. Do you want them back? He goes like, if it's online, I don't need them anymore. <laughs> then I also, um, Paul Greipner at Cortiva, actually it was Beth Moscato, who's here at the conference this week. She wrote to me and said, we have, we have a number of copies, and they uh, occupy an entire bookshelf. But Paul is kind of refusing to give up on it. But he agreed, if I scan them and they're accessible, to get, that we can get rid of them. So I got those. Uh, Scott Riley from TechMag had a few missing issues. And that basically filled everything back to 1968. Think about that, 1968. I'm not going to ask who was not born. By <laughs> <laughs> but the rest was still missing, so that, that got then it got harder because, you know, this is 68. That's a long time ago. And um, then I got an email from Matthias Ernst, who's also at this conference, from the ATI in Zurich. He let us know that he had an almost complete collection from the libraries of Richard Ernst, which we all know. But very few people remember Hans Primas. Who was the professor at ATH under which Richard Ernst studied? So he goes much further back in the history of NMR. 
than Richard. Richard learned from Primas. So that, and those issues, uh, Matthias sent them to Stefan Grezek, and Stefan Grezek had his at the uh, Biocenter in Basel, and he had offered, first of all, and he's also the president of ISMAR, and he had early on graciously offered that ISMAR would host that collection. And also his, co his co-worker, Alexander Meng, um, got voluntold to, or teared, <laughs> to scan those copies from the ATI in Zurich. And with those, we had everything except 15 issues. We were down to 15 issues. That was somewhere in early this year. And then I knew already early on that the Science History Institute in Philadelphia, which was mentioned in the discussion before, they collect artifacts from science. And Ted Becker had donated his collection to the Science History Institute. But they're a nonprofit institu institution, so they would like to get donations or something like that. So they would actually be charging for the scanning. So down at 15, we said, OK, now we can do it. So we asked them to provide us with the missing 15 issues. And it was sometime in, I think it was March we had of this year, we've completed uh, the collection. And now we have 100% full collection. So where are we standing right now? And I will assume no responsibility or liability for the countless hours you're likely to spend on the website that is now hosting the complete collection. So be warned of the rabbit hole you're entering. <laughs> be warned of that rabbit hole you're entering when you're, um, when you're trying to get into this. So. Uh, here's the link, at your own risk, <laughs> the Ismar Society um, hosts those. And based on an index, which is an Excel sheet we got from our dear colleague Vera Mainz uh, from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, uh, she, uh, she must have typed in every title and all the authors of all these issues and created this huge spreadsheet, um, which gives us some searchability of that database. And uh, of course, there are still things which can be done. So we can end up with a better index. Um, we can, they all have been character recognized, so it's searchable text. Uh, that could be done. So a search engine could be run over it. The ISMAR website is a WordPress site, so you know it's and it's only everybody's hobby to do that. Uh, but eventually, but the one thing I think we've achieved here with everybody's contribution is that we preserve this for posteriority, and because this there was no guarantee that it would stay on and it is really the history of NMR in all these letters because this is not people would communicate information early on this is okay it's like uh, one of these archive type things or pre-publication or whatever you would freely exchange information uh, so what I would like to share are a bunch of examples out of the letter, I also brought a few issues here, which you're happy to browse. I know exactly how many I brought, so don't walk <laughs> away. <laughs> don't wake up, walk away with them. Um, so you see here, so they were not always called the Tamu newsletters. The name of the publication reflected where Barry Shapiro was at. He started with Axel Botnaby at the Mellon Institute, not Carnegie Mellon University, it was the Mellon Institute. And just, we are those smart people who come up with the best acronyms. <laughs> so, 
So, the monthly ecumenical letters from laboratories of NMR, Mellon MR, was the first name of that letter. And this is the introductory letter in issue number one. And already issue number two had quite a number of contributions. But what is also interesting to see is these were the initial subscribers to the um, Mellon, NMR, Mellon newsletters. And there are quite some names on there. We have names on there like E.J. Corey and F.A. Cotton. And... Gatowski and Jackman and Lodeber and Primas was on there, JD Roberts, Schulery, uh, John Waugh, and Woodward. So it was not just the strict, NM, uh, what we know as the NMR community, it was chem the chemistry community. There was the, they were all on the launching subscriber list and then after that it grew quite a bit and for those of you who are not familiar with the publication or with that journal with that with those newsletters the way you were part of it is if you were a subscriber you had to um, contribute so you had to contribute the letter every now and then once a year every six months or something like that you had to contribute if you did not, you received issues with red dots on it, which told you if you're not contributing soon, you're going to get kicked off. And initially, it was su fully supported by the universities. So after um, Barry Shapiro left the Mellon Institute, he went to the uh, Illinois Institute of Technology the IIT, and then the, it was known as the IIT NMR newsletter. Only then he moved to Texas A&M when it became known as the TAMU newsletter, which was the longest period. And once he retired from TAMU, from TAMU it simply became the NMR newsletter. And um, in 2001, I think it was the internet and all these things kind of just made it so outdated. You could see that somewhere in the 90s, the, um, the volume was the thickest. And then it declined early 2000. It really got thinner and thinner because there were other forms of communication coming on. The, uh, all these early forms of the internet. <laughs> And eventually, he was also retired. Um, after he retired from t uh, Texas A&M, he lived in the Bay Area for a while and then moved with, his fam with part of his family to, uh, to Washington State. I think he lived in Bellingham, where his wife, Lee, still lives. So, a few examples. Um, people published circuit diagrams. So, you see that um, you had some... A simple method for obtaining phase alternated sequences on a CFT20. Uh, ha hands up, who knows what a CFT20 <laughs> Now we're down to about three hands or four <laughs> hands. Which so um, people came up with improvements, add-ons, and they published how to do it so the rest of the community could actually um, duplicate that and themselves improve uh, the, spec the, the spectrometer, and one of the favorites, <laughs> all-time favorite letters in the, in the Tammuz letter is from Stefan Berger, who unfortunately passed away the, uh, just a short time ago. He's the, he's the person behind 150, 200 um, NMR experiments, those books. So he had to move an instrument, and... What Brooker had at the time was uh, these, these clamp-on inflatable legs onto the magnet. So what he did uh, to move it, he deflated those legs, put a slab of bacon underneath, <laughs> and reinflated that 
for lubrication and just pushed the magnet across the floor. <laughs> and he shared that with the community. <laughs> and that was in 1991. Uh, another thing, and uh, this is a really amazing example for what person Richard Ernst was. Um, he, I mean, he was an absolutely fabulous NMR spectroscopist and was honored for that with the Nobel Prize. But he has always been also engaged in science policy. And there are le to this day, there are lessons we can learn from this gentleman. We scientists, we know that without science and technology, our civilization would not survive for long, and the environment would deteriorate even faster. That was written in 95. Isn't that still true in 2023? And he really pleaded with the community that we engage ourselves in spreading that word and um, Yeah, this is um, when he says the current political trends in many countries around the world tend to maneuver science into a position of secondary importance. How true was that until only a few <laughs> years ago? And how we're all, we in many place in many countries on this planet we are again at just at the edge of sl of slipping into that again or certain states in the US, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go. So, um, let's end up on a fun note. This was um, a letter from the late mid-80s from Cecil Dubowski and co-authors on so-called the disaster of the week. And... Um, so here are some spectroscopic disasters. <laughs> and so for example, disaster of the week number two is that spectrum in the lower uh, left-hand corner. Is that spinning sidebands? Is that the local radio station? Is it coupling to N14? Or is the receive again set too high? Any guesses here? Receiver gain too high. Ruth wins. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so there were a couple of disasters of the weeks which got presented here. Number five is also a nice one. Um, what is that? A rare case of Brownian motion causing jittery nuclei. Is it eccentric NMR tube? And not eccentric, eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> and the failure to lock the spectrometer or the, spin the sample spinning too fast and vortexing? Failure to lock, congratulations, that is the correct answer. So um, I should really also um, at this point acknowledge um, Everybody, or all the people who I've worked with, um, some, unfortunately, like Richard Ernst and Hans Primus, who are no longer with us, but they have contributed their collection. So Francis Zeparovich, who really started the whole project, Stefan Grezek, who jumped in very early uh, to offer the hosting, Brian Sykes, Beth Moscato, says, says Johnson, Paul Grautner, Scott Riley, who contributed a lot of volumes, which they sent to me and I scanned, Matthias Ernst and Alexandra Meng, who uh, contributed Ernst's collection and Primus's collection, and Alexandra, who scanned it all, Grace Sharpless Cook and Michel DeMeo from the Science History Institute, who made those last 15 um, Issues available, Ted Becker for his collection, Richard Ernst, Hans Primas, and then Lee Shapiro, his wife, Catherine, Catherine and Miriam Shapiro-Schwartz, and many more who supported the project and told me to keep going 
and not give up on the project. And so um, with that, that's the end of my presentation. Um, I just wanted to quickly, and I, I hope this all works. So this is the website. Um, here is a bit of the history. So uh, you can see 58 through 64, he was at Mellon. Uh, 64 to 68, he was at the IIT. And then 68 through 95 at Texas A&M, and he retired in 95. And then it was simply called the NMR newsletter. And the way you can navigate that, here are all 516 issues. Each one of those links gets you to an issue where you can then uh, look at it and say, oh, Gary Maciel, I know that guy. I want to know what he did. <laughs> and there is another 15 minutes gone. <laughs> so you, get, uh, you cannot pick a single issue and not stumble across a name which evokes some memories. It's absolutely impossible to do that. So I warned you. <laughs> I don't want to hear about or hear from some of your partners and spouses that you are glued to the screen and reading some funky old newsletters. <laughs> so eventually advertisements came into play and so, you know, the Tracor Northern Signal Averager, uh, I have to honestly say that's before more, my, that's even before my time, but it was in there. So companies who are no longer with, with us, uh, ads from Nicolet, who all, oh, for all of those who remember Nicolet, and so on and so on. There are also, a um, occasionally one finds, um, so here we go, a T60 with the Nicolet TT7 Pulsed FT system. So this is a long time ago. <laughs> and that, that br uh, some of the things go around, cir uh, circle around. So Nicolet, for the younger ones of you, Nicolet was acquired by GE, which then eventually closed up, which was acquired by Brooker. Brooker was actually, I remember when Brooker was in this suite, so late 80s, early 90s, we occupied this space here, Oak Shelter. We at one point, we had the 600 megahertz magnet on the front porch here. <laughs> so it's all history. It's just a beautiful thing to look at these, um, to, to be aware of how this method, which we celebrate to here with the ENC conference, how that evolved and what was it. And this, you, you can read textbooks, you can read official publication, but this is the informal history. This is where a lot of the stuff which was going on behind the scenes actually happened. So, and on that note, I mean, uh, I'm happy to show other things. <laughs> Have Thank you. If anyone remember, if anyone here wrote a letter and want me to bring it up and remembers the issue where they did this, feel free to do that. So I'll pass it up back to David. I'll just talk and just say that I copied Vera's Excel yeah. onto this computer. Oh, oh, good. Okay, I copied Vera's Excel file onto this computer so people who want to come up and, and search names or search titles are welcome to do so. All right. Yeah. Oops, misspelled that. <laughs> yeah. Is it open there? Yeah, it's open. It's yeah. it, I have it open on, on the, uh, I'm just navigating. Oh, there it goes. It's just uh, fighting with this uh, high field NMR of solids. Uh, so uh, you you just pick a name and uh, let's see rice. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, that's a W. I guess that's no, not do, you. Can you do it again? I've already done this. <laughs> you've done. You've uh, searched yourself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was 1980s. So. Oh, back further back. Yeah.
interesting price. Yeah, try Oldfield. Oldfield. There we go. But he had a lot of them. And he, he I realized, had a lot of them. I realized that he went back a lot further. I mean, I knew his history before I became his graduate student. Right. But, oh, um, here you go. That's you go. one. So that would be issue number 241. Yeah. So now you go uh, into the website. We look at... Oh, where are we? 241. There we go. And here is one, page 19. There are usually two cover pages, so add two to that. And, oh, yeah. PTS. <laughs> Who remembers the Roners? <laughs> and we here go. we go. <laughs> I, I would not be surprised um, if... Somebody took a blank sheet of paper, put it on the XY recorder, first recorded the spectra, and then typed the letter over it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, there was some, well, there was no funny business there, but uh, I have a memory of that spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> and... I mean, for again, for all for um, the younger ones, at the time you typed it on the what is it, thirty-two bit, thirty-bit machine? Yeah, yeah. On the thirty-bit machine, and the thirty-bit had no Greek symbols, and it had no chemical yeah. structures, and none of that. And if you look through some of the letters, you will see that people left spaces on the letters and then hand drew the structures, hand drew the deltas and all the Greek letters in there. Um, that's the way you did it. Um, also, th typically around this in December issues, you find announcements of ENCs. Mm -hmm. So the program, basically the main speakers of ENCs from back then would be announced always in about the December issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can like the 50 and C and stuff like that. You can really find that. You can find the speakers who are there. So if you if you want to kind of dig back into the history, whether you lived it or you didn't live it, it's really a, w a wonderful place to, uh, to Lemons, find these things. Can you yes. hear me? Lemons? Uh, Hello? Here. George. 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 Yeah. It's George Gray. Oh, okay. I think oh, he's okay. on. <laughs> yes. I think in the first, uh, I'm not sure how many issues it was, but I think it was a responsibility for the people that wrote letters to pri provide enough copies to send it for Barry to put it together and send it out. So it was really, <laughs> he didn't, you know, duplicate stuff. I think they actually sent physical copies of their letter to it, enough for the whole mailing list. At that point, of course, it wasn't that big. Early on, yes, I think that was the case. Later on, I think it was printed or so. You did not have to send. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You just duplicated yourself and uh, 30 subscribers, so I want 30 copies of the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, George. Any questions, comments? From the chapel, from Zoom, from <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> the new chapel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ruth. I, I have a yeah. Who do you, who do you think, uh, or who did you find ha contributed the largest number of letters? You can get that from your database, no? <sighs> that question has come up. I have not answered it yet. So okay. that the, it. Just curious. Yeah, there isn't there isn't really a count in it. I would have to sort by last name and then yeah. kind of count okay. it down. So there are a, a large number of um, frequent contributors, definitely. Very prolific. Um, another name which just pops out here is Jim Cooper, <laughs> who was actually at... 
broker and IBM, but he actually was came to the e to the last DNC before COVID. I talked to him in Baltimore. He was in Baltimore, and if anybody ever wants to l read a funny story about NMR, he sh you should get the book Flame Out, <laughs> which is the history of IBM Instruments. It's a good read, and there's so many names you know in there. It's a fun. It's a fun read. Another piece of history. Any other questions? Anyone you want him to look up? <laughs> Ray Freeman. A letter with wonderful with a wonderful title, the em the Emperor New Clothes, together with Garrett Morris. Um, small is beautiful, Freeman and Bax. <laughs> Another Freeman and Bax and Morris inadequate. So a lot of times, it it was in the, in the NMR newsletter before it got published on in in a real journal. Uh, he was definitely a. Um, He published a lot, Revolution and Counter-Revolution, with Malcolm Levitt and Tom Frankel. <laughs> so I, you I, it, also, it is also an excellent uh, way to find out kind of the genealogy of NMR, who worked with, with whom, when. Um, so there is, um, it's really interesting. Well, it's on the Ismar website. So it's on the Ismar website. You can download it. Yeah. So yeah. if you're on the website, you can, you will see here. Um, so you can search the index here. Yeah. And y it also says here there is an Excel version you can download. Right. That's what I did. Or you can t you can also search it from there is a search field yeah. there you can go searching. Yeah. Actually, I found it didn't work on my computer. Right here, <laughs> and then um, you can download the whole Excel sheet. Yeah. <laughs> Already starting to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Well, when, when we started this, I, I sort of said, oh, well, I'm going to read a whole bunch of them and contribute what I, you know, what's interesting to me. I mean, you've done it great here. <laughs> and then I realized what a rabbit hole I was in. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to get some work done. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. Um, I was glad that I did a lot during the early phases of the pandemic where we still have yeah. a little bit more time and it was a little bit more relaxed. And now a lot of people have come up with other ideas what could be done. So one idea um, which is now floating is um, we are what we're the 64th uh, um, ENC. Yeah. Um, all these paper abstract books. Yes. That's another piece of history which is just going to go away if we don't do something about it. So there is a push and I. I've scanned my fair share of NMR history, so I l <laughs> I'm happily making my abstract books available for somebody else would, which wants to pick that up and do that. <laughs> I have kept every abstract book. Okay, you have that to. Like I have been to the ENC for, which was uh, <laughs> regularly during my time at Varian. Okay, yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the people uh -oh. who was it interested <laughs> was Jeff Hoke. So he might be interested to collect oh, that and also okay. with the uh, NMR hub and NMR box yeah. make that available to the community. Oh, that's a good idea. I was, I've been cleaning house, which also explains that. <laughs> and um, and uh, I was debating whether I should throw them away or not, but each time I come upon them, I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, good. I spoke to Ray um, 
Yep. Yeah, I spoke to Ray a couple of years ago and asked him, do you have those? And he said, oh, I threw them out. And so if anyone has any of that stuff, that is, it's irreplaceable. Uh, he contributed a few to the NMR newsletter, so a few of oh. his letters have, have cartoons attached. Thanks, Clements. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's... Ray Freeman? Oh, yeah. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted everybody to be able to hear it later on. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. <laughs> 261. Clemens, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is George, George again. Was there ever any European newsletter? For any period of time, um, the no, uh, there were lots and lots of European contributions. And one thing I didn't, I I forgot to mention is that in the beginning of the NMR newsletter, it was absolutely fine uh, to write a letter in your own language. So you will find letters from the '60s and early '70s with. French letters in there, and German letters in there, and English letters in there. They were just included in the, uh, in the newsletter. Later on, it became all English. And a, when I was a student at ATH in Zurich, um, my supervisor published a couple of, th wrote a couple of letters which had some of my work <laughs> included, and later on I had my own. So it, it had a really international audience. It, uh, I know also some of our colleagues in Russia, and that was Iron Curtain times. They also had their contributions, so it really goes way back. Um, and it is not just an American history of, of NMR, it is really an international history of what's been going on. Now let's see if whatever he, uh, Ray wrote about inadequate, whether it includes a cartoon. No, it includes Spectra. <laughs> so <laughs> But this is this is definitely in the early day. Here is Ad Zinish, Ad and Ray and uh, and Gareth, who uh, I think the it's very likely that the public the paper actually appeared later than this letter. This was also something you could not cite the newsletter. It's all basically all personal communication. So hmm? any, anyone else want to look someone up? <laughs> oh, so shall we wrap up then and, and thank Clemens? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Cle Clemens, thank you very much for uh, Dare I say this labor of love? It and, was. Uh, it absolutely was. A a absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank and, you uh, very much. You 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 have done the NMR community uh, quite a service. Thank you by, so much, by sir. putting this together and uh, much appreciated. Thank you. As far as this, what do you call it, Dave? This this monstrosity. Uh, personal <laughs> I, I think someone told me when they came in there, working on a uh, memory module for it that will include uh, 512 bits, not 512K, not 512 bits of magnetic core memory, but a little bit difficult because it's like twice the size of this thing. So <laughs> it, it, it'll take some, uh, uh, some effort. After that is a uh, floating point processor, I think. But we'll see. <laughs> Cle Clemens, very, very nice job with this. Thank um, you. <laughs> did, did you guys all enjoy this? That's fantastic. Thank you. Th thank you again, Clemens and Dave. Um, Pleasure. <laughs>